Docker is an open source platform that automates the deployment of applications inside lightweight, portable containers. But what exactly is a container? And how does Docker work its magic? At its core, containerization is a method of packaging, distributing, and running applications. Unlike traditional virtualization, which involves running multiple operating systems on a single physical machine, containerization focuses on encapsulating an application and its dependencies into a single unit known as a container. Now let's break down how Docker works. With traditional virtual machines, you're going to have your hardware. And on top of that, you're going to have your hypervisor or operating system. So to clarify that, you have type 1 and type 2 hypervisors where you can either run the hypervisor on the bare metal, you can install it like an operating system, or you can install it on top of, of an already existing operating system. So here you have your hypervisor, and then on top of that you will have your virtual machines, we'll just call this one VM1, VM2. VM3. Each of these virtual machines are going to have their own operating system. And then on top of those operating systems that you have in the hypervisor, you will have different apps. And then with Docker, things are done a little bit differently. Again, just like the virtual machine, you're going to have your hardware. And instead of a hypervisor, you're going to have just a host operating system. And then on top of the host operating system, you're going to have Docker. And then on top of Docker, you will have all of your individual apps. So as you can see, this is going to cut down on a lot of the cost of the resources that these apps will be taking because you do not need a host operating system for each one. So today we're going to be installing Docker and on top of that Portainer to help manage our container. So if we move on over to the Docker install page, you'll see that there is different instructions for each version of Linux that you'd like to install it on, uh, whether that be Debian, Ubuntu, or, or any of these other ones. Uh, today we're going to be installing this on top of Raspbian Lite 64 bit. Raspbian is a port of Debian for the Raspberry Pi. Currently I'm SSH into my Raspberry Pi and the first thing I'm going to want to do is try to un uninstall all the conflicting packages that may be on our system. Uh, this is a fresh install of Raspbian so I should not have any of these packages. All right and after that the first thing that you're going to want to do is set up Docker's uh, apt repository which can be done by running these commands and all of these will be down in the description below. Now that we have the repository, we would now be able to install all of the Docker packages. Hit yes to continue. All right, and one way we can confirm that our Docker is actually installed properly is by running the hello world container, which is unable to find that image locally, so it'll be pulling it from the internet. All right, and we do have Docker installed properly because it ran the container. All right, and now you'll be able to find the documentation on how to install Docker on a Linux machine on the website. It's very simple, straightforward. I will also put the link to this and the commands in the description. First, we're gonna wanna create a Docker volume for Portainer. Then we're gonna want to install and run the Portainer Docker image. Again, it's unable to find it on our system locally, so it'll be pulling it from the internet. All right, now that it's done pulling that image, we can see that it's up by running sudo docker ps. And we'll see that Portainer is up and running. All right, and you can access the Portainer web UI for the IP address of your machine at port 9443. On a fresh install, it's going to ask you for an administrator username and password. And this is up to you. You can either allow the collection of anonymous statistics or not, it's your personal preference. All right, and after you have installed Portainer and you are logged into the web UI, you can click get started. And you will see here the local machine that you are running it on. You just click on it. And then if you click here, you can see the containers that you have running or also stop. Uh, this is the hello world image that we use to test it. We can just remove that. All right, and here you'll see that you have one little lonely Portainer image running. And then uh, if you come down here into this next tab, the images tab, you'll be able to see all the images that you have stored locally on your machine. Um, so here's our Portainer image and the Hello World image, which you can just remove, uh, even though it doesn't really, it's only 9.1 kilobytes. Down in the networks tab, you can add or remove virtual networks that you have associated with your, within your containers. And then down here in the volumes tab, 
you're going to be able to add or remove storage volumes that your that your containers can access. And the next tab that you can see is, let's say you're on a network with a bunch of other users that may be able to have access to this, may try and log in and modify some things. You can see here in the event list what exactly is going on. If you come down here to the users tab under settings, um, you can add other users and add them to separate teams. And if you did have the business version of Portainer, you would be able to add separate roles to people. Under the container section, you can also add new containers without having to use the command line, uh, giving by giving it a name, specifying an image, which you can also search on Docker Hub. And then down here, you're able to specify the volumes that it's allowed access to, the network, and also any other environment variables that may be specified. All right, and that's all for today on installing Docker and Portainer in a Debian environment. Thank you for watching. If you have any more questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below, and I'll answer them as soon as possible. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.